All right, what's up, what's up, what's up? We got about four minutes to go. We got four minutes to go. And we're going to get a crack of lacking up in here. Yeah. You got a health question? What's the question? I don't know if I'll be able to answer it, but you can put it out there. is good Looks like Periscope is tripping a little bit. Welcome, everybody. What's up? We got two minutes left. Hey. Whoa. Okay. All right. I got you. Hold on. What's up? What's up, everybody? What's popping? It's 1030. We're going to get started. Yeah. Okay. You guys, give me a few minutes. Give me a few minutes. I'm trying to get Periscope set up. Periscope is doing their the normal freezes. So bear with me for a few minutes. And we're going to get started up in here. Thanks for coming in. No doubt. No doubt. Hey. Whoa. 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 My man Torrin got a question. Let me see if I can answer it here in a few minutes. Let me get Periscope set up one more time. Thank you. 
All right, let's try this again. Periscope. And we live one more time on Periscope. We're going to see if we can keep it popping. I want to thank everybody for coming in. I want to thank everybody for coming in. Yeah. Yeah. What's up, everybody? Thanks for coming in. Scroll for old comments. Okay. Yes, indeed. This is another Thoughts of the Week. Let's get it. Woo! What's up, everybody? What's good? I'm going to wait like three more minutes, and then we're going to get it cracking. Wait for some folks to come in. And we're going to start the show. We're going to start the flow. <laughs> that's what's up. Yeah, that's one of the beats I created. Two minutes, two minutes. Two minutes and we're going to get started up in here. One minute, one minute, and we in it, in it to win it. What's good? Welcome everybody to Thoughts of the Week. We're going to get started. What's up, Y on Periscope 4444? What's good? Let's go. Yeah. Thank you. 
What's up? What's up? What's up, everybody? Thank you guys for coming in. And welcome to Thoughts of the Week. Real quick, I want you guys to uh, share this out to your peoples. I'm on Instagram. The first time doing this live on Instagram as far as the show. So I'm on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, Periscope, Twitter, LinkedIn, and Black Social. All right. I'm on Black Social. Oh, this took out my uh my feed. All right. Just bear with me, ladies and gents. Every now and then those technical difficulties do arise. Technical difficulties do arise. There we go. We back up. That's what's up. There we go. There we go. All right. Thanks again, ladies and gentlemen, for coming in. All right. And just so you guys know, I am on Periscope. All right. I'm on LinkedIn. I'm on Twitter. All right. Instagram, no doubt. Facebook, YouTube, and Black Social. All right. If y'all, if y'all not on Black Social, I'm gonna tell you what Black Social is. Um, it's like a combination of it definitely has a LinkedIn feel. It has a uh, and a Facebook type of feel. Um, I just got started on it. I had the app on my phone for a while, but I really uh, started on it. Signed signed up with it. Um, probably a couple of days ago. So you guys check out black social. It's like the, it's like a LinkedIn version slash it's a mixture of LinkedIn and Facebook for black people. All right. But I'm sure they allow any other race in, but mainly it's for uh, black folks. Thick chicks rock. What's going on? Thank you for coming in. So like I said, I'm on, um, Right now, I'm broadcasting live on Periscope. I'm on LinkedIn. I'm on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, and what was the other one? Black Social. That's right, Black Social. So you guys are not aware of Black Social. Again, like I said, Black Social is like it's like a more laid back version of LinkedIn mixed with Facebook. I would say. And mixed in with a little Instagram it has that kind of feel of all those mixed in for black people. So you guys get the black social app. A lot of people are starting to it's starting to be talked about more and more. I just signed on. Um, I got the app. I had the app for a while and I went on and. Uh, signed up with them maybe a couple of days ago. All right. So. We're gonna on the show today. We're gonna talk about twenty five questions. I don't know what this thing is doing, but we'll get there. Twenty five questions related to health. All right. Twenty five questions related to health, and let me see something real quick here. All right. So what I want you guys to do is share this. Those who are on Facebook, um, those of you listening on YouTube. Um, <laughs> what is the best way to reduce swelling in your foot and ankle? All right. That's my man, uh, Mark. He done text me the message. <laughs> um, the best way to reduce swelling on the ankle or foot, I would say, um, here's here's something I, um, to try. Number one, try alcohol, rubbing alcohol, and start using pouring it in your hand and just start rubbing your foot. I just found personally, I found that does a lot of wonders. I never had really swelling, but I had a lot of um, not a lot, but at times throughout the years, I had some pain sometimes, some aches every now and then. Um. 
And so I would say try um, rubbing alcohol and start rubbing your foot with it from time to time. On top of that, don't do it like back to back, you know, rub your feet with, with so maybe I, before you go to bed, take some rubbing alcohol, rub your feet. All right. And then at some other time of the day, take some um, some ice, of course. And uh, you can make your own ice pack with uh, maybe some get some large baggies or something and throw some ice in there. Maybe you wrap a, a towel, small towel around it or a washcloth and just put it on your foot. Um, of course, you can uh, soak your feet in some cool water instead of hot or warm water. All right. So, um, again, this is thoughts of the week, 25 questions related to health. And I want to answer a question, um, from my man, Torin. He had a question up, put up earlier, uh, concerning out, um, cholesterol said, can a person check their own levels and what is a good way to lower it? I don't know about the levels. I can always find out later and uh, let you know about that. Or I can look that up probably now in a few minutes, but as far as lowering your cholesterol, of course, exercise. Um, is a big part of it. Of course, your um, eating habits are definitely a part of that. The cholesterol thing. I had something in a book I was reading. I can't remember where I read it at and which book I was reading it from just last night regarding cholesterol. It would have been very informative. Maybe we'll get to it in a little bit and I might end up finding it. All right. So I got like nine, eight or nine books sitting beside me. And at the end of the show, I'm just going to read out the books and maybe on um, like YouTube and Facebook. And let me see what else. YouTube, Facebook. Um, maybe Twitter. I'll probably put the uh, as well as reading the titles of the book. You just ate two greasy sausages. <laughs> you crazy, man. And um. So what I'll do is I'll read the uh, hot links. I hear you. I'll read the name of these books that I have here and you guys can check it out on your own. You know, if you're interested in reading different books, I got like, like I said, nine books here and I'll read the titles of them later on at the end of the show. So in regards to the cholesterol thing, as far as checking it on your own, I'm not sure how you would do it. But um, as far as lowering it, you got oatmeal, you got um, they, uh, even Cheerios has been linked to helping lower cholesterol. Of course, you got your exercising and you got your eating habits. All right. So those are pretty much some things you can look into changing in regards to that to lower your cholesterol. All right. The fried foods do take a part in that. And matter of fact, man, it seemed like I had something in regards to that. Hold on. I'm sure I'll get to it. But. um, So once again, thank you guys for coming in. Share this with your people. If you can, when you can. I'm going to try to take some questions a little bit later on in between. So what I'm going to do, I'm not only going to just read questions. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to read a few questions here and there. And some of the questions I might respond to. All right. Some of the questions I might respond to. And some of the questions are for you to either respond to or just simply think about. You might want to write the questions down. You might want to do research on the question. All right. So this is all like a, a whole a holistic type of thing. It's not just me giving out answers is something something for you guys to think about and myself to think about as well all right so i want you guys to be on that mindset of being to, being able to think about things be critical thinkers uh be researchers research every now and then if one of these questions hits you and i don't happen have a response to it or it was just me asking the question and you feel like you want to go further with it most definitely do that all right so my first question, question number one is, question number one, do you read the labels of the food that you buy? 
Do you read the labels of the food that you buy? Whether, let me see, whether before or after you buy it. So if you're going in, going to the store and you're going to buy something, before you actually go to the counter, do you look at the labels and read the ingredients? Do you read the information on the saturated fats? Or do you do it after you buy it? Do you go home and, and look at it? Or do you not do it at all? All right. So that's number one. All right. Number two. How important is your health to you? All right. How important is your health to you? You would like to know that question. How important is your health to you? All right. How important is it? Number three. Number three is number three is what excuses do you tell yourself or others for not exercising? All right. What excuses do you tell yourself or what excuses do you use when you talk to other people? What excuses do you use? about exercising all right so i'm gonna respond a little bit about that and let me i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna read some i'm going to read some excuses that people use and you can respond to it and say hey that's me or you know you can keep it to yourself either way either way is cool all right either way is cool so in regards to what excuses do you tell yourself or others in regards to exercising? All right. Um, do you say you have you have no discipline? Have you have you heard that or have you told somebody that? Have you said um, I, don't, I don't have any money for equipment? Have you heard it or have you told somebody that that excuse? Did you have you told or have you heard the excuse that, oh, I don't have any time. I don't have time to exercise. Right. Do you use that excuse? Have you um, heard somebody use the excuse? I don't have any time to exercise. Um, do you say or have you heard? I don't have a, I don't have a gym, a gym membership. Right. Have you heard that excuse before? Have you heard the excuse of I don't have any room or space in my residence to exercise or I don't have any room or space to exercise? Have you heard the excuse of people saying, I don't like to sweat? Or have you used that excuse? <laughs> I don't like to sweat. I want to thank you guys who's watching me on YouTube, by the way. Thank you for watching. Uh, Periscope, Instagram, um, Black Social. Thank you guys for checking me out on Black Social. LinkedIn, thank you for checking me out. Appreciate it. Twitter, thank you. Facebook, thank you. All right. So back to the excuses that people might use. Um, I don't have any interest in working out. Have you heard people say that? Oh, I'm not interested in working out. Or have you used that? Um, this is probably one that women would probably say. I've heard women say this one here. I don't want to get big like a man. You, pro you probably heard women say that a lot. What's going on, Luanda? Thank you for coming in. Appreciate it. So a lot of women use this excuse. Uh, at least I've heard it. Have you used this excuse before when it comes to um, the excuses that people use or tell themselves or tell others in regards to ex not exercising? It seems like it is moderately number five equals number uh, five important to me. If it was more important. I would not have eaten the hot links this morning. <laughs> there was three other dishes less greasy. <laughs> I hear you, man. <laughs> I hear you. I hear you. I mean, every now and then, I'm not, um, me, myself, personally, I'm not one of those people that got to be on that super strict, strict. Man, I'm just eating this, this, this every now and then. You got to have some of that quote unquote good stuff to eat every now and then. But you got to make your lifestyle 
as a whole more on the um the healthier side but every now and then i like to sprinkle in that cheesecake every now and then i like that ice cream every now and then i like that fried chicken so it's all good but as you, if you look at it as a whole as far as from january 1st to december 31st what is your activity as a whole all right and each, each month, you might do your little cheating each month. And that might be good mentally wise, because if you start putting yourself like on that super strict, I'm just going to eat this, I'm going to do this, do that. And you might not be mentally ready to do all that. So your mind going to come back and tell you, man, you better go ahead and hit that chicken, home girl or homeboy. So... <laughs> Or that you better get that cake. <laughs> so you gotta um, do things kind of in moderation. But as a whole, from the first of the year to the la last day of the year, what is your activity throughout? All right. So those are the excuses that um, some people might have used before. <laughs> and so. We're going to go on to number question number four. Let me see here. All right. Number four is kind of like a multiple answer type thing. All right. So you decide on which one is you or not you at all or something you heard. Yeah. So saying the physical body can handle it. Yeah, um, I don't know, T, I don't know if you, um, in regards to that response, yeah, some people have this thing where they're just going to jump out or they just come out and like, hey, I'm going to just go and do this. What's up, Sandy? Thank you for coming in on YouTube. Um, some people just jump out and um, they automatically just say, oh, yeah, I'm going to do this. And they start it. They'll get rid of all the junk food in their fridge and just throw it out. And then you give it a day or two and they slowly go on right back to the junk. So you got to you got to kind of slowly do a progression on your changes. And start getting used to it. And then when you change one or two things, then you can go on to the next thing. Work on that. Now, there's some people that can because everybody's different. Some people can just jump right into it and they done. It's just like people that might that, that might smoke. They'll just they'll be smokers and they can just jump right in and stop smoking right then and there. And you they'll you'll never see them smoke again or drink again. And but there's some people you gotta gradually work your way out of that. So all right, so let's check out number four. Which one of these statements is your belief? So which one of these statements I'm about to read is your belief, or you've heard somebody say that? Uh A, I can't find the time. Yeah, no problem, Sandy. Definitely share this. Um, share this with some other people, by the way, Sandy. Okay, which one of these statements is your belief? A, I can't find the time to exercise, or I don't have the time to exercise, or B, I at least have two to ten minutes a day to exercise, or I can find at least two or ten minutes every day to exercise. All right. So some people have the mindset of they just can't find the time. They always they use that as part of the uh, kind of linked into the other question, number three. But this is number four. Some people act like, oh, I don't have the time to exercise. But I think everybody has time to exercise because everybody has two minutes. You can't tell me some somewhere out of the day from when you wake up to you go back to sleep. You can't tell me you don't even have two minutes. Everybody has two minutes. Everybody's day is not that ultra busy where they couldn't slip in two minutes to do five push-ups. <laughs> you don't feel motivated. Come on. The trick of that. Now, here's here's the thing. I um <laughs> you see, so you get even even you, you have to you have two minutes. You can't tell me you don't. You got five minutes. I even say that you even have 10 minutes at least a day to do something. And here, here's the thing. If even if nobody, some people don't are not into the uh, 
the heavy weights or weights period, but everybody can walk. Everybody. And matter of fact, I recommend that to anyone, even those who walking with canes and whether you're young or old and you're walking with canes or even crutches, do some type of walking. All right. Even if it's just for those who really are strained and they're walking, even if it's just you walking from one area of your residence to the front door, start doing that. All right. And if you do that every day for those who are really in that predicament or in that condition, as far as health wise to where, because I've run into some people older, some younger, where you can fiz- you can visibly see that it's hard for them to walk. Or doing something at a distance is really going to wear them out. Just do it from maybe your bedroom down the hallway or from one or for, from one room to another room. All right. So everybody has time. Even if you think you don't, you have it. Let me see. At times, Sandy says, at times I can't find the time. Don't don't come up with that, Sandy. To do seem like it seem like it. But when you have a dog, you have a lot of time to do so. Nah, you got time, Sandy. Trust me. You have you have two minutes. I say five for everybody. Everybody has five minutes. Two minutes is too too small of a time everybody has five minutes to do something and that's real talk you might not you might put out that excuse like i ain't got the time for it but you have five minutes and if any if you don't do anything just walk you used to lift weights back in the day you still can lift weights and even if your arm is strained just do lighter weights that's all all right so Everybody has, I'm going to put it out there. Everybody has, including me, everybody has five minutes in their time of the day, every day to do something. It doesn't have to be big. It can just be you walking for five minutes and then that's it. You done. Next day tomorrow, do another five. All right. So let me go to number five. All right. Name some aerobic exercises. All right. Name some aerobic exercises. I'll give you one. If y'all want to respond to it, cool. If not, that's cool. We're going to the next one. Um, I already mentioned ro- uh, walking, so that's one. And I'll mention um, so something that I do as well is jump rope. I haven't been doing it lately. I'm going to get back to starting back, starting that again is jumping rope. So there are some others out there. So you can fill it in, respond to it. But name some aerobic exercises that you guys can do. That's number five. All right. Number six. And this is something you might want to research. All right. What is the purpose of the liver? What's the purpose of the liver, the liver in your body? What's the purpose of it? All right. Number six. I mean, number seven. What is the purpose of your kidneys? All right. What is the purpose of your kidneys? And the black neighborhood, there's a lot of the dialysis going on and relating related to kidneys. All right. So let's find out. Do y'all research and find out what is the purpose of your kidneys? That's question number seven. Question number eight. What percentage of your body is made up of water? What percentage of your body is made up of water? Um. You might be able to find the answer because I did I, on one of my Facebook posts. It probably was several years old, but I think it got reposted again. I should. The answer should be on there. So you guys that are on my Facebook, my personal Facebook page, you can kind of scroll down and see if you can find the answer to that question number eight. All right. Question number nine. What is allopathic? Or let me let me say, what is the allopathic mindset? What is allopathic medicine? What is the allopathic mindset? Um, Sandy said 80% on the water. I think you're correct. Somewhere between 75, 80% in regards to uh, question number eight, the percentage of, of uh, what percentage of your body is made up of water. 
So I think you're correct, Sandy. Um, what should I say? Number nine was what is allopathic medicine? All right. I actually have the answer to it, but I'm gonna let you guys look it up. All right. Number 10 is what is naturopathic medicine or what is the naturopathic mindset? All right. Okay. Number 11. Let's see. Uh, I worry that if I do five minutes, I might be tired to finish working. Now, nah, actually, you might be finished tired of working if it's during the day after work. Let me tell you, let me tell you what I noticed. This um several years ago, I used to get up early in the morning, like maybe five o'clock. Because I just I just wanted to try it. I, I would get up and I did it for a little while, but then after a while, this it's just the time getting up. So I had to start learning what's my best times to work out. And um, but for a while I was getting up like five o'clock in the morning, like right before maybe an hour and a half or so before I, it was time for me to get ready to go to work. I will work out. Do it hard, hit the weights, whatever it was I was doing that day and then, you know, get ready for work. And then it was still morning time. So I would say around 10, 1030, I would feel like I was sleepy. For just a little short period of time. And then when it got hit, when it hit afternoon, like around 1 p.m., I just had this crazy energy. And because of that, I kept on. That's the reason why I kept doing it early in the morning. But it's the same thing regardless of what time, whatever time you do it. But I just noticed that when I would get up in the morning, work out. And then around one o'clock, it seemed like it was always the same thing every time around 1 p.m. on out. I just had this crazy, I was just energized like crazy. And that's just working out. So you might feel tired for a little bit, but then you'll start noticing within an hour or so, a couple hours or so after you worked out, you be like, man, I feel like I got all kinds of kinds of energy. So definitely keep doing it. Even if you got even if just five minutes, man, just go on and keep working out anyway. You'll find you'll see that your energy level changes. It, it will change for sure. It will change. All right. So number 11, let's get to number 11. And you guys can answer it. Um, it's kind of a, it's a put it in order type thing. All right. So when it comes to takeout foods, when it comes to takeout foods, put the foods in order of popularity. This is order of popularity. So I'm going to read out, I'm going to read these three foods out. And you put in, you know, what's the first one that's the most popular, the second, and then the third. All right. I'm not going to read the answers. If you guys want to know what any of those, well, not any of them, some of these questions that I say I have the answers to, if you want to know the answers, you can, um, you know, after this live stream and live soundcast is over, you can put a message in the box. If it's on uh, Instagram, you can DM me. And ask me about that particular question and I'll respond to it um, on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, um, Black Social and LinkedIn. If you guys want to know the answer to certain questions that I say, hey, I got the answers to them or the responses to them, then just hit me up in the message and I'll, I'll give it back to you. All right. But here's the question number 11. When it comes to takeout foods. Put the foods in order of po popularity. All right. So we got chicken sandwiches, seafood and hamburgers. So out of those three, which is the most the most popular, the first one, then what comes after that? And then what's the third one? So, again, you got chicken sandwiches, seafood and hamburgers. When it comes to takeout foods, put the foods in order of popularity. All right. That's number 11. Number 12. And I'm going to. Respond to that. Number 12. Number 12 is who is Royal or Dr. Royal Raymond Reif? You've probably never heard of this person. I don't even know if he's black or white, but I've heard of the name. So who is Dr. Raymond or Dr. Royal Raymond Reif? R-I-F-E. 
Oh, okay. Let me see what Sandy said. Sandy said pizza. I didn't put in pizza. You got to use the three that I <laughs> that I said at a at a uh, chicken sandwiches, um, seafood or hamburgers. Out of those three, which one is the most popular? Which is the which is the first? You never heard. Of? I'm, I'm gonna get ready to tell you who uh, Raymond Rife is. A little, I'll give you a little bit. I read about him a while, but um, I, I still haven't found out if he was a black or white doctor. <laughs> <laughs> Sandy, your trip. So, Dr. Raymond, uh, Dr. Royale, Raymond Rife, R I F E. All right. This guy, he was said to have come up with the cure for cancer in the 1920s. All right. Raymond Rife was said to have the cure for cancer. And I actually think somebody has the cure for cancer now, but they kind of keeping him shut down. Popular to me or to society. I guess I guess both popular to both society as a whole and, and popular to you. Out of those three, out of um, chicken sandwiches, seafood and hamburgers, what's your most popular? And then and as society as a whole, out of those three, which one would be the first one? Which one would be the second and which one would be the third? All right. So Dr. Raymond Rife or Royal Rife. I think he was a scientist, a doctor, and he was said to come up with he had the uh, cure for cancer in the 1920s. But the American medical industry saw that as a threat. Sounds familiar today, huh? So he had a cure for cancer and then the American medical industry apparently saw this as a threat that he had this cure for cancer and uh, saw it as a threat to all the money they were making off the sickness that couldn't be cured. So the American medical industry, now I guess you could say like the pharmaceutical industry of to, will be today, they took this as, hey, this guy has a cure for cancer and we making money off these people from being sick and not having a cure for it. And this guy comes up with a cure, how dare he, you know? All right, to you, you said chicken sandwich, burger, and then seafood. Oh, okay, I got you, I got you. All right. So Raymond Rife, you know, he had his cure. He was said to have a cure in the 1920s for cancer. And the American medical industry saw it as a threat to the, all the money they were making and, you know, off the sickness that they couldn't, um, that cancer couldn't be cured. So he was killed. Now, in another book, that I have, I read from two different book, books and then I did some online kind of researching on them. One book goes a little bit more detail and said, you know, he supposedly got sick, quote unquote sick. You know how that goes. Y'all know about the Timothy uh, Cunningham, the CDC scientist that was found dead over there near the uh, water in Atlanta recently. Um, so they always come up with this. Okay, you think society... We'll come up with hamburger, chicken, and seafood. Yep, that's correct. <laughs> that's correct. That's the order it came in when it came to popularity of food. That was number 11. All right, so back to um, Rife, right? So he was killed, and all of his work, <clears throat> all his work was destroyed or quote unquote lost. You know how people say, oh, his. His work, his great work was lost. Most likely it was stolen and kept. It really, I don't think it was destroyed. It was probably stolen, kept, and somebody else has the cure and maybe improved on it and they're just going to keep it and they're not going to put that out. But I think somebody recently, today, I don't know if it's in a, uh, another country or somebody has the actual, uh, I believe something close to a cure or the cure of cancer, but you're never going to get told. And by the way, um, I read somewhere that YouTube was supposedly trying to shut down people's accounts that talk about any health related stuff um, outside of medicine, uh, dealing with, you know, people taking medicine. If it was some natural type of, foods and stuff that cured and you posted it on YouTube, supposedly they were 
going to block your account or delete it or something like that. So I'm taking it hasn't happened because I'm kind of talking about health today. So I'm, I'm assuming because Sandy's been conversing with me on YouTube that it hasn't happened. So hopefully they don't. Hopefully YouTube, you guys don't do something like that. Get everybody they free reign to talk about it and put whatever up there as long as it's just not like out there crazy. Oh, somebody told you that the other day too. Yeah, so it's crazy. I don't know why YouTube would do that. And it's a great platform, one of the great platforms for people to put out information and things. I would think if it's something that'll help people, why would you want to block them from trying to help people? That's kind of crazy. It would, if this is true, YouTube, and I know you're hearing, I know you're checking out my videos, you know, I ain't never scared. But if this is true, that might speak on who you are allied with for wanting to block information that can help people. I don't understand that one. So YouTube, don't do it, man. Just go on and, and let people put information out that's that's going to be beneficial. So I say put every everybody wants to put whatever type of information, whether it's garbage or whatever, let them do it. Let them do it. There's a reason why I say that. But let everybody put out what they need to, what they want to put out and stop censoring everything or trying to censor. But anyway, let me just get back to Rife. Um, yeah, he was said to come up with a cancer for cure. I mean, a cure for cancer in the 20s, 1920s. He was mysteriously killed or found dead. You know how that goes. Um, they were saying that his, his work was lost. And destroyed. Um, and anybody who supported him, they threatened them too into denying any knowledge of his cure. All right. And then to this day, there are people saying that it's really hard to find out information relating to his cure. So I guess they did a real good job to make sure they had, they make sure you couldn't find out anything in regarding to Rice research on cancer curing cancer or anything like that. So you guys look that up if you're interested. It's uh, Royale, R-O. Some people spell it R-O-Y-A-L-L. -L. Some people spell it just Royal, R-O-Y-A-L. Um, like I said, I took a look at a couple of books and one mentioned his middle name, the other one didn't. So Raymond is, is supposedly his middle name and Rife, R-I-F-E, is his last name. All right. Okay, let me see here. All right. Um, I guess this was supposed to be 13, but I didn't write it down. But anyway, what is a tumor? What is a tumor? Real quick, let me grab one of my books here. And by the way, like I said, at the end of the show, I'm going to read out the titles of these books. If you want to get your own health study on and health research on, let me see here. Volume one or two. What is a tumor? All right. What is a tumor? Go ahead. 246. All righty. What is a tumor? All right. A tumor is a swelling or abnormal growth of cells and body tissue. They can be they can be cancerous or non cancerous. All right. A tumor occurs when your body can't carry out proper cell division, which is a process that creates new cells and discard the old ones. When there's an imbalance in cell division and you're creating more new cells, then you can kill them. A tumor forms. All right. So that's what a tumor is. And you could always go back to this video and, you know, get the answers to it. Let me see here. Let me see who the hell you want. All right. Here's something I'm going to, like I said, I'm not just going to read questions. I'm kind of going to give you some um, information in between every now and then. So I want to put you up on this real quick. Page 203. 
um, cleansing slash detoxification, detoxifying, all right? Cleansing, also known as detoxification. Uh, because what you're doing is removing toxins from your body. Too many of them can cause serious chronic illness, the worst being cancer. We get toxins in our, this is what I really wanted to put y'all on right here. We get toxins in our bodies every day by drinking unpurified water, um, eating processed foods or produce, fruits and vegetables that contain traces of pesticides. Um, we get toxins in our bodies by breathing filthy air, smoking, drinking, taking certain medications. We get toxins in our bodies from stress and indigestion. All right. Most of these toxins are stored in your body fat. This is why obese or overweight people have traces of weed slash drugs in their system for a longer period than their slimmer counterparts, all right? When you fast, you're cutting off your energy supply, i.e. food, which forces your body to go to your stored body fat to produce energy. What that does is break down the fat molecules and, and release the toxins in them, and then your body does the rest of the work and flushes those toxins out. The longer you fast, the more you cleanse your body and the better you feel, all right? So I wanted to pass that on to you. All right. I think I had a question in here. Let me make sure. Well, no. It's actually one of them. At the end, I think for the last five or six, instead of questions, I'm going to give you some vocabulary words. But one of them is um, thimerosal. All right. Have you heard of thimerosal? It's boiling water, an effective way to detoxify water. Um, boiling it is a way to kill, I guess, some of the germs in it. So um, I think it definitely will kill kill the germs that are in it. I'm trying to think of uh, there was some other ways to, and I might talk about that on another show. There was some ways to, um, like, what happens if you get one of these big, massive deals where everybody's out in the street, you know, the economy crashed and you got to be surviving whether in the urban concrete or in the rural concrete or wherever, and you got to kind of get your water from outside in the street or from the trees or whatever, there were some different ways to um, purify the water, some little tricks. So maybe I'll talk about that on another segment. But boiling water is a way to, to remove um, some germs or maybe even kill some germs that's in the water. Because the, the hotter it gets, you know, you burn some of that, kill some of that stuff off. So now detoxifying it, I don't know. I don't think I don't think doing that in itself might detoxify it or not. Now, just off the top of my head, I'm what's going through my mind right now is you read out salt in the water before you drink. Yeah. I read the ages ago. Okay. Um, something that came to mind while I was saying that was the um, activated charcoal. So maybe you boiling water now and you had like a strainer and you put the strain, you put some um, and some of it is going to get in the water. And I actually I actually poured actually uh, one time I had some I took like a small. Maybe half a teaspoon. I did it some years back. Of uh, I put some activated charcoal in some juice or something, and I drank that. Um, I couldn't really tell if it did anything, but it didn't harm me either. So, but they say activated charcoal is good, especially if uh, kids or even adults happen to drink anything poisonous, and you start giving them some of that. The uh, charcoal actually is supposed to draw the stuff out some way, so. That kind of came came to my mind in regards to detoxifying water. Uh, let me see here. Dimerosol is what I was talking about. You guys might be interested in this. Let me find something real quick. Page three ninety four. 
Thimerosal. Thimerosal. All right. Let me see what we got here. Might be in the wrong book. Oh, yeah, I am in the wrong book. Let me grab, grab this book here. All right. For those um, I didn't realize, that's right. Um, Instagram tends to have to be on a timer. So those who are checking me out on Instagram, the time is up. Instagram doesn't give you, only gives you so much time and then they shut the uh, video down, which they got to change that, man. I don't know. I don't know why they even do it, but I thank you guys who was watching anyway. So I might start a new uh, video on Instagram here in a minute, but they Instagram put, put you on a timer. So you can't stay on live like the other, like Facebook and YouTube and Periscope. You can stay on there. I think as long as you want, I think uh, when you use Google Hangouts on YouTube, they allow you like eight hours to stay live. So if you guys are were on Instagram and you're on some other platform listening to me, welcome back, by the way. All right. Thimerosal. Thimerosal is water soluble cream colored crystalline powder but here's the thing with thimerosal and this is the stuff i believe that they were saying was in they were putting in the vaccines all right and people were some people end up dying later on and especially if you had kids and you was giving them vaccines and um people they were saying thimerosal was one of the ingredients that were in the vaccines, whatever vaccine that might be. So it's a water soluble cream colored crystalline powder. But then here's the kicker. It is 49, almost 50 percent, 49.6 percent mercury by weight. And that's what they're saying is killing the kids or kids all of a sudden have these uh, artistic become artistic. They was healthy when they were born. And then you shoot them up with these vaccines that have thimerosal in them. And all of a sudden they be they become autistic. And you start noticing funny things about your children. It might have been because of the vaccines they were giving your kids. All right. So thimerosal is said to have 49. I'm just going to round it off to 50 percent of uh, mercury. And mercury is some dangerous stuff to be ingested. And by the way, um, I think they say when people who go to the dentist and they get those fillings, supposedly it has mercury in it as well. So I say that to say that if you guys go on and uh, having your, ch your kids get vaccinated with certain things, ask them what, what ingredients are in those vaccines. And if they can't tell you, you might be better off not letting your kid have these uh, vaccinations. And then when it comes to you going to the dentist, find out some alternatives that you can have done instead of the um, the uh, mercury type fillings. All right. So with that being said, I'm going to go to I'm hoping I'm on the same the correct book here. If not, then I go on. Let's see. Yeah. All right. I'm going to read this, give you some more knowledge. So check this out. Um, totally avoid, if you can, totally, totally avoid hydrogenated oils like margarine and all deep fried foods such as donuts, French fries and potato chips. Uh, all right. Stand by, ladies and gentlemen. Let me see if I can get on live. I'm going to try to get on live again on Instagram, on the gram. OK, I guess it's processing. So, again, totally avoid all hydrogenated oils like margarine and all deep fried foods such as donuts, French fries and potato chips. Now, I said earlier that. Some people can cut all that stuff off real easy, no problem. Some people have to slowly 
wean themselves off of it. And so it's nothing wrong with moderation per se. My stronghold on foods is chips and sodas. That's yeah, I know. But but if you start noticing some adverse health effects, then that's something you got to start considering. Is if you should be or how much consumption of those chips and sodas that you actually um, take. You might have to take less of it. It's not saying don't stop, but if you've been have you take if you eat five bags of chips a day, you might have to lower that down to two. <laughs> all right. <laughs> so, but totally avoid all hydrogenated oils like margarine and all deep fried foods such as donuts, French fries, and potato chips. Read the food labels. Our foods are being poisoned to today with hydrogenated oils in our boxed foods, mayonnaise, and salad dressings. Use cooking oils with unrefined or non-hydrogenated written on the label. If these terms are missing, the oil is hydrogenated. So the best oils to cook with, according to the book I'm reading here, um, and some other little research I heard before, the best oils to cook with are extra virgin olive oil, coconut oil, which I hear a lot of people cook with coconut oil and um, butter. A lot of people think, don't think butter is, um, and I kind of knew this a while back for some years back, butter, the real, real butter, not that old, I can't believe it's not butter type stuff, but the real butter is better for you than margarine. All right. It's better for you than mar margarine. Okay. Let's see. All right. Let me see something here. All right. Here we go, Sandy. Here we go, Sandy. We're going to talk about soda pop and colas. <laughs> soda pop and colas, including diet cola, are some of the worst things that ever happened to the health of America. The great majority of these drinks are loaded with sugar. They act as total cations or cations because they are sticky and loaded with caffeine. In addition, all sodas, colas, and diet drinks are loaded with other chemicals that are totally cash cationic. I think that's how you pronounce it in nature. The word is spelled C A T I O N I C. Cationic or cationic in nature and detrimental to your health. All right. A person would be wise to leave out all of these drinks from their diet. All right. And so now I'm going to talk a little bit about I'll read a little bit about this, uh, about alcohol. All right. Alcohol is probably one of the most socially acceptable poisons after non herbal tea and coffee. Most beers average about four percent alcohol. Wine contains six percent and brandy and whiskey about 40 percent. We should not forget that alcohol is a food and provides calories in the form of carbohydrates. All right. Um, where am I at here? In the form of carbohydrates. For an overweight person, this can be detrimental. Alcohol has an adverse effect on almost every vitamin and mineral. In particular, vitamin B1, B2, B3, B6, folic acid, um, calcium, magnesium, and zinc are depleted in the bodies of those who consume alcohol. So check that out and keep that in consideration. What'd you say? Um, it, it seems like if I don't have one, I have the shakes or <laughs> sort of, yeah, you probably have the shakes because, because of that. So as you becoming, you know, getting addicted to that, the soda and the caffeine, um, deficiencies of these nutrients, the B1, B2, B3, B6, folic acid, calcium, magnesium and zinc affect one's general health and one's mental health in particular all right alcohol interferes with fatty acid metabolism the effects of long-term consumption of alcohol on the body can be devastating liver damage nervous system imbalance and brain damage all right certain types of cancer are increased as a result of alcohol consumption especially cancer of the liver esophagus, larynx, and mouth. Any woman who drinks alcohol while pregnant is an absolute fool. 
<laughs> That's the book saying that. It is quite common for children who are born of mothers who consume substantial amounts of alcohol during pregnancy to suffer from facial deformities and be mentally retarded. So keep that in mind, ladies, about drinking alcohol while you're pregnant. Don't do it. All right. So let's get back to some questions. Let's get back. So here's one I have the answer for. If you want the answer later, just holler at me on one of my platforms. But what does WIC stand for? What do the letters stand for? The W, the I, and the C. What does WIC, W-I-C, stand for? I got the answer to that. All right. Number 14. Okay. At what age were you in your best physical shape? What age was it when you was like, man, at this age, I was in my best physical shape. What age was that? All right. What age? Let's see something here. So I guess um, Instagram only, I thought you can always get back on Instagram. Let me see something real quick and do like a second live. But apparently I guess you can't. Oh, I haven't figured it out yet. What I was trying to do is go back on live. Let me see something. And maybe do like a second video or something. Okay. Well, we're off the air for uh, 14. You said 14 was the age where you were in your best physical shape. Man. All right. Huh. I don't know. I have to say, I think I was in pretty good shape for a long time. I'm trying to think of the best, if you want to say your best physical shape, what age. That's something I had to think about a little bit because I was pretty active for a long time, even when I was young. You said laughing out loud. Not really, though. You could say like 20. So when you was around 26, you was probably in your peak best physical shape. But that's something to think about, though, because when you reflect on that, you're like, man, and, and whatever age you are now and you reflect on whatever age it is that you were um, in your best physical shape. That's something to think about. And might be some motivation to move you back into getting in shape. Right. So that was 14. Um, number 15. How much water do you drink a day? All right. How much water do y'all drink a day? That's number 15. We got about 10 or 11 to go. So how much water do you drink a day? Now, I'm going to say this. Here's a good rule of thumb as far as drinking water. I read this in several books, and I remember watching Dick Gregory say the same thing on one of his videos. And it's a good rule of thumb to, tr to try to apply as much as possible when it comes to drinking water. So you say three bottles a day. All right. But here's a good rule of thumb you can you can put into practice, not to say that you might make it all the way through. But here's something. A good practice to try. All right. So. Here's a good rule of thumb. You take whatever you weigh. All right. Whatever you weigh in right now, whether it's. Whether you weigh 100 pounds, 150, 200, whatever. You take your weight and you divide it in half. All right. So, for instance, let's say 200. I'm over 200 pounds. But let's just use 200 to make it easy to understand. So, let's say I weigh 200 pounds. Right. So, 200 divided in half or divided by 2 is 100. So, you take that number, that whatever that half number is, which in this example... Is 100, or you can use 180, but whatever the number is, let's stick with 200. Divided in half is 100. So, what you do is you take that 100 and you try to drink 100 ounces of water. So, that's a good rule of thumb to try to apply now. You might not be able to do it, but try to do it as close. Whatever your weight is, divide it in half, and whatever that half number is, try to drink that half number in the amount of ounces. So, the example I use 
was 200 pounds. If I weighed 200 pounds and I divide it in half, that's 100. And so I would try to drink 100 ounces of water a day. So that's been a rule I've, I've, I've tried to, um, I've applied. Sometimes I can do it in a day and the other days I might just do half of the hundred. I'm not I'm just using the hundred as an example. All right. I'm, I'm in between two twenty and two thirty, somewhere around there. So whatever my half number would be, I try to drink that in water in ounces. So again, we can use 180 pounds. So take 180 divided in half, that will be 90 pounds. All right. So you would try to drink 90 ounces the key word is ounces. Drink that in ounces of water. So that's a good a good rule of thumb to try to apply when it comes to how much water you need to drink. Try to drink whatever your half, your weight in half. Try to drink that in ounces. All right. That's a good rule of thumb. All right. Number 16. When is the best time to drink water? When is the best time to drink water? All right. Some people might say, man, it might be a better time to drink water than whatever time they drinking water. All right. So let me read this from another book I have here. When to drink. All right. As, um, as important as staying well hydrated is as important as it is to stay well hydrated it's easy to forget to drink water until dehydration has already set in uh, research has shown that the best time to drink water is before you even feel thirsty so um, physical signs like dry mouth and sensations of thirst often occur only after you are dehydrated so what this is saying is that if you start feeling like, man, my mouth is so dry or you get these. Um, you get um, sensations of, man, I'm, I'm feeling real thirsty. If your mouth is dry or you feeling like you're really thirsty, you already been de you're already dehydrated. So what this book is saying before you even start having that feeling, you should already have been drinking a bunch of water anyway. So nine times out of 10, if you already feeling like, man, I'm really thirsty or man, my mouth is dry. Your, your body, you was already dehydrated before that, before that even occurred. So. What it's saying is to start drinking water. Even prior to even having those feelings. All right. Even when people remember to drink water, they often fail to drink enough. The amount of water required for each individual is determined by his or her weight and metabolism. And I already went through that as far as a good rule of thumb to use is to go whatever your weight is. Half you divide it in half and then take that half number and drink that water in ounces. And again, using the example of 180 pounds divided by two is 90. Or divided in half, it's 90. So I need to drink 90 ounces of water a day. All right. So there you go with that. Number 17, how much physical activity do you get each day? All right. That's something that you have to answer on your own and reflect on. And it might make you think like, hmm, if it's not enough or hasn't been enough, then maybe it should increase. All right. Maybe it should increase. So again, how much physical activity do you get each day? How much physical activity do you get each day? All right. Number 18, what can you do to change to a more active lifestyle? All right. What can you do to change to a more active lifestyle? And by the way, I see one more person who had probably been in for a while watching me on YouTube. Thank you for coming in, by the way. So 18 is what can you do to change to a more active lifestyle? So 17 and 18 kind of work hand in hand. Number 19, where does most of the digestion take place? All right. I'm going to give you three choices. It's a multiple choice. One of them is correct. 
All right. So again, the question is number 19, where does most of the digestion take place? A in the stomach, B in the small intestines or C large intestines. All right. I got the answer. You guys can respond to it on my pages if you're listening to me live and later on I'll respond back to them. But where does most of the digestion take place? All right. And let's see here. I got like six more to go. And what I'm going to do is just give out some. Um, instead of questions, I'm just going to give you some vocabulary words you can look up. I won't give the meanings to them. If you want the meanings to them, just holler at me on uh, social media somewhere on one of my platforms. Your Internet's going off, going out, but thanks. No problem. You're welcome. Most definitely. Um, so for the remainder of questions, instead of questions, I'm just going to read these vocabulary words and then we're going to get up out of here. All right. So and if you want the answers, you know what they are. Just how did you know how at me on uh, social media? So first word is. Amenorrhea, amenorrhea. It's A M E N O R R H E A. Amenorrhea. The second word is atherosclerosis. Atherosclerosis. All right. That's spelled A T H E R O S C L E R O S I S. Atherosclerosis. Look those words up. All right. The next one. Is B cells, the letter B dash cells, C E L L S. All right. B cells. Look that up. Um, here's one that's very interesting. Um, you heard of vegetarian and whatever else, Tarian. Here's the word to look up carbotarian. Carbotarian. C A R B O T A R I A N. What is a carbotarian? Look that up. All right, the letters C H F C H F stands for congestive heart failure. All right. What is congestive heart failure? There's a reason why I want you guys to look this up. Now, again, I'll give you the answers if you ask on one of my platforms. Um, C A D, the letters C A D stand for coronary artery disease coronary artery disease so what is that look that up um endometrium now you know what endo endometriosis well you have a word that's similar and endometrium endometrium that's e n d o m e t r i u m endometrium all right uh, the next word here is free radicals, free radicals. All right. Um, another word is thimerosal. I, I basically gave you the meaning to that earlier. So thimerosal, you can add to that list. I gave you the answer to that. Um, phytonutrient, phytonutrient. P H Y T O N U T R I E N T, phytonutrient. All right. What is quackery? <laughs> quackery. Q U A C K E R Y, Quack, quackery. What is radical hysterectomy? Radical hysterectomy. You always heard of hysterectomy. What is radical hysterectomy? All right. Um, sarcoma. What is sarcoma? Uh, let me see. What is, I think, let me try to make sure I'm pronouncing it right. I'm going to pronounce it in a couple of ways. Um, one way I'm going to pronounce it is peachel. Peachel. I guess that's how I'm going to pronounce it. It's P-E-T-E 
C-H-I-A-L. Or petitial or petitial. Pichu, pichu or petitial. What is that? P-E-T-C-H-I-A-L. All right. Um, let me give you. I asked this earlier. That's probably one of my earlier questions. What is um, naturopathic? So look that up. Um, let me see if I'm pronouncing it right. Either iridology or irid iridology. Iridology, iridology or iridology. That's I R I D O L O G E. Now I think um ology, if you break the word in half, I think ology is just the study of, if I'm not mistaken. I have to look that up. The study of. And then so you add the word in front of it, whatever word it is, iridology is the study of or something else, something similar. So look that word up. Um, let's see here. Carcinogen. Look that up. You guys, I'm sure you heard that word before. Carcinogen. Look that word up. All right. Um, chelation, I think I'm pronouncing it correct. Chelation therapy, chelation or chelation therapy that's C H E L A T I O N therapy. If you guys are on uh, Periscope for whatever reason, nobody's messages has been showing up, so I can't see it. Oh, I see somebody just came in. Hold on here. Either you just came in or you've been here. Oh, that's why I think it's still on there. Anyway, appreciate you. I appreciate you guys for watching the replays and the live on Periscope, by the way. All right. So that's my 25, man. That's 25 questions. I could be in here for another couple of hours just to read up some more health stuff for y'all. But I got some things to go do. But I'm going to read a couple of them. Let me run and check out some things real quick. And uh, let me see what else I can, uh, what other information I can leave you with that I help help out. All right. Let me just read this about um, looking for a pediatrician for, I guess this for parents with kids. Um some things to consider when deciding on a pediatrician, all right? Let me look at this real quick. Before your baby is born, you should have already interviewed and decided on a pediatrician. Call your health insurance and get the names and numbers of pediatricians that they cover in the area in which you are willing to travel. Remember, you don't want the doctor to be too far in case you have an emergency. All right. Um, you also don't want to settle on a doctor just because they are close to home. You want to be sure that they, that they share your health care philosophy and are willing and able to answer and address your questions, concerns and needs. All right. You can also go to the health insurance's website to search for names and locations there as well. If you are looking for a more natural or, or holistic doctor, you can use natural magazines as a resource. Ask other parents um, who use or who that use, doesn't make sense. Or you can do an internet search of um, natural or holistic doctors for your child, practitioners, all right? Um, did you know that Medicaid in New York covers home birth? I don't know if that still applies, but according to what I'm reading, it says um, if you got Medicaid in New York, it covers home births, having births at home. So you guys that are living in New York might want to check that out. And matter of fact, you might even want to check out whatever state you're in and find out if that's the case in your particular state. If you got Medicaid, your Medicaid might cover home births for those who want to have a home birth instead of going to the hospital. 
You never know unless you ask. So find out and ask. Just have um, just ask and see what you know what answers you get. Now, before I get out of here, um, some things to consider when deciding on a pediatrician are what insurance do do they accept? What are the standard fees? If you have no insurance, what is their standard fees? Um, what medical school did they attend? Where did you do? Ask them where did they do their residency at? Ask them if they're board certified or board eligible. How long have they been in practice? These are some questions you should find out about them. Uh, which undergrad school did they attend? Are they a member of the American Academy of Pediatrics? Um, what hospital are they affiliated with? And can they call, can you as the parent call them or have some connection to them 24 hours a day? Um, do they have an answering or paging service? Of course, their location and their hours, their office hours. What is the average wait time during a normal visit? Um, what should you do if there is an emergency? Do they have a backup doctor if that particular doctor doesn't make it or can't make it to see your child? Can they recommend a backup doctor? Do they have one? And where are they located, that backup doctor? And do they follow your main doctor's ideas and good practices? All right. Something to think about. And saying, when should you introduce solid foods? To your child that's something to ask them when is a good time to introduce solid food um when do you think prescription drugs are necessary how do you feel about childhood vaccines this is stuff you need to ask the pediatrician how do you feel about childhood vaccines and will you explain each vaccine and their adverse effects or adverse reactions before giving them to your child. That's very important. I was talking about the thimerosal earlier. All right. So this is something you need to ask your pediatrician. How do you feel about child? Ask them how they feel about childhood vaccines and have them explain each vaccine and their adverse reactions before they give it to your child. All right. If I choose not to have my child vaccinated, will you continue to care for them? That's something else to ask them. Do you offer exemptions? That's something else to be in mind. All right. What tests do you do routinely after birth? Do you consider circumcision to be medically necessary, even though the American Academy of Pedi Pediatrics does not? I don't know if that's true now in 2018 or there's still the same mindset. If I decide not to have the procedure done, what must I do? If I decide to have the procedure done, what must I do? Do you recommend cloth or disposable diapers? And what are the pros and cons of each? This is you asking these questions to your to the pediatrician. All right. Um, I have a particular diet. Let's assume whether it's vegetarian, vegan or raw foodist. How do you feel? This is you asking the pediatrician. How do you feel about this type of diet? And have you cared for children with this type of diet in the past? What are your thoughts on breastfeeding and how long do you recommend it or recommend I do it for? That's for the ladies asking the pediatrician. Do you have a list of lactation consultants or someone I can call if I need assistance or have questions? All right. What type of infant formula do you recommend? All right. During your interview, I'm going to read these last few and then I'm gone. All right. During the time you're interviewing your pediatrician, asking them these questions, was the doctor or the pediatrician and, and his or her staff respectable of you? And did you feel comfortable? Do you know anyone who has used this doctor before successfully or unsuccessfully? So ask questions of other people if they use the same pediatrician that you're considering. Were there age appropriate toys and books for the children? What did you notice about the office decoration? Are both the office and restroom clean? Is the doctor a patient doctor or an inpatient doctor? 
or pediatrician where all of your questions answered when you asked them the questions were all of them answered how does the doctor interact with children that's important how long did you wait to meet with the doctor all right and lastly did you hear or see anyone complaining about their care or experience with this particular pediatrician or doctor all right so there you have it ladies and gentlemen i gave you 25 questions or about 19 questions with the remaining vocabulary words as my remaining questions and in between i gave you some interesting information so um i hope you guys definitely do some more research and let me before i get out of here i said i was going to do this i was getting ready to shut it down but before i go i'm going to read off the title of these books in case you guys are interested and picking it up all right so the first book is a is a actually a it's a volume one is a volume two it's called the hood health book hood excuse me hood health handbook like you go into the hood it's called the hood health handbook there's a volume one and there's a volume two all right um next book here vitamins and minerals from a to z Vitamins and Minerals from A to Z by Jewel Pukram. Now, the other book is by um, Supreme Understanding, CBS, uh, CBS, A Life, A Law, and Supreme Understanding was the Hood Health books. All right. And in this book, Vitamins and Minerals from A to Z is Jewel Pukram. All right. Um, the Black Man's Guide to Good Health. The Black Man's Guide to Good Health, um, James Reed and Neil Schulman and Charlene Shucker. All right. And here's a good good health for African-Americans, Barbara Dixon. Some of these are old books. Um, the Seven Pillars of Health. The Seven Pillars of Health by Don Colbert. All right. Um, I don't know if you'll find this book. This is more like a journal, but it has information in it at the same time as you log in, in your exercises. I ain't, I don't really use the journal part to log in the exercises I do because I use an app for that. But there's information in here, like little quick little facts on each page that I still like. And then there's some information on the beginning of this book. So I don't know if you'll be able to find it, but it's called I Will Get Fit This Time Workout Journal by Alex Luch. I guess that's how you pronounce it. L-L-U-C-H or Luch or Luck might be pronounced that way. It's called I Will Get Fit This Time. All right. The next one is African Holistic. Yo, what's up, uh, CEO Ballin? I'm about to get out of here, my friend. On Periscope. Um, the next book is called African Holistic Health by Layla Africa. He's very familiar. I know Layla Africa, or some people pronounce it Laila Africa. All right. African Holistic Health. All right. Another very popular book by my, my man right here, my man Scott Whitaker. He's supposed to be writing, um, or it should already be out, or at least he should be finishing up. It's supposed to have been out this year. It's called Medicine. All right. And it's spelled M-E-D-S-I-N, not the regular way you spell medicine. And this is a great book, Medicine. And you can probably catch him on YouTube videos. It's Dr. Scott Whitaker. Um, him and uh, Layla Africa, there's videos of them two having um, debates in regards to health. So you can catch them on uh, YouTube. But it's Dr. Scott Whitaker. And the book is called Medicine. I'm waiting for his other book to come out. Matter of fact, I've been trying to find him because I think I used to uh, talk to him by email. But I had gotten new email addresses since then, and I'm trying to find uh, a way. I think he had a website as well where you can get his contact information. He was pretty good with um, you know, responding to you. So I like him a lot. And there's one more book. There's probably more somewhere, but there is a book called... See if I can get it here. It's by Jawanza Kanjufu. 
And he has loads of books, not just about health, but other by um the destruction of black boys. He has books on that. He has books on education. So he got a lot of books out. He's a beast. But um, I think it's called uh hold on, let me get it. The last book. And that's a good book too. This one I'm getting ready to uh tell you about read the, the uh, title. So medicine. And then this last one is called I want to make sure I get the title right. So I'm gonna I got this one on. I got I got the physical book not, not with me, but I also have it on the uh, iPad. So I'm trying to find the iPad one. I want to I can say the title, but I want to make sure I got it correct. It's a very, very informative book, too. All right. Yep. This book is called Satan. I'm taking back my health. Satan. I'm taking back my health is by Jawanza Kanjufu. That's a real good book. It's like 115, 120 pages. You can read it in a day. Or in a couple of days, but the information in there is crazy. All right. And he has other books as well. Like I said, he has different books on different topics. Real knowledgeable, real knowledgeable dude. That's he's kind of um, in the sense of having different um, YouTube pages and Facebook pages and Instagram pages. That's kind of where I got that from, because he talks about different topics. And I also have different pages for different topics as well to be knowledgeable in different areas. So it's one of the guys that's kind of inspiring to me in that sense, as far as being knowledgeable in a lot of areas. <clears throat> so you can know what you're talking about on different subjects, but his name is Jawanza Kanjufu. And the title of the book is called Satan. I'm taking back my health. That's a real good book. I haven't finished it yet. I kind of browse through different pages and, Every time I browse through them, different chapters, I say, man, let me go back to this, the chapters I'm reading so I can work my way down to it because the information in there is crazy. And my man, Scott Whitaker, the medicine, M-E-D-S-I-N, medicine, is a great informative book as well. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. I appreciate it. Thank you for coming in. Thank you for checking me out. I don't know how long I've been on here. It looks like going on let me see an hour and a half and that's roughly the times i'm always on so once again i thank you guys for checking me out on thoughts of the week i try to be here every other week on a tuesday but i got some other projects i'm working on so i just try to be on as often as i as i can so always just be checking me out to see if a new episode of thoughts of the week is on and um, I will be, you know, promoting the shows when I know I'm going to come on. I'll promote it a week before or a few days before on different platforms so you guys can check it out. All right. So I appreciate you guys. Thank you, Periscope, Instagram, my Instagram people, my Periscope people, my YouTube, my Facebook, my Black Social, my LinkedIn people. Um, what else did I live out? Twitter. Thank you guys for coming in and checking me out. And I will check you all out soon. All right. Peace. I'm out of here. And the replay starts now.